Hello, and welcome to episode two of Project Milano. In the last episode, we looked at the scale options and source material available to design and build this enigmatic ship from the Guardians of the Galaxy. Ultimately, I decided to go for 1 to 48 scale, giving me a model with a wingspan of over a meter, and it sounds like you guys think it's the right scale too. Thanks so much for the feedback, it's really appreciated, and encourages me to do the best I can to recreate this amazing ship. Going this big, there will be a few problems to overcome, but I'm sure I can find solutions. In this episode, I'm going to make a start on the cockpit, which I'll then build the rest of the ship around. For the movies, physical sets were built of the cockpit, but there are quite a few differences between the cockpit in the first and second films, but I'll explain about those in due course. This movie still with Star-Lord in grey is from the second Guardians film. The cockpit rig was articulated to simulate flight, and has the central canopy frame removed. This was added with the canopy glazing in post-production, as you can see here in the closing scene from the first film. For me, this is the classic Milano and crew configuration, and what I intend to recreate with my model. After a lot of searching for source information, I got lucky and found a set of plans for the cockpit online. These were for the cockpit film set, and even had dimensions. This meant I was no longer totally in the dark, and had something that I could use to recreate the cockpit with reasonable accuracy. The only downside being the image resolution. This meant I only had the most basic information, but at least I could read the dimensions. Overlaying the section drawing which had known dimensions onto my original plans, I discovered that my plans were slightly too small, and at the wrong angle. This gave me a revised wingspan of 1066mm, or about 42 inches. This was about 50mm bigger than before. Fortunately, I found this out at the beginning of the build, before it was too late. Together with the plans, I also need source photos, and the best method I found was to get screen grabs from the movie. This proved rather difficult, due to copyright protection. I could only take physical photos from my TV screen, hence some of the janky quality. What I got wasn't great, but it gave me all the information I needed to make a start. Fortunately, a lot of the cockpit is symmetrical, and the seats are basically all the same, with variations, but I'll explain about that later. I often get asked what software I use for my 3D modelling. I've always used Cinema 4D, and find it easy to use for this kind of hard surface modelling. Many people use Blender, which is a great free alternative, but I found it very frustrating to learn, giving up after several attempts. I begin by loading in the earlier plan views of the cockpit, and size them all to 1 to 48 scale. Doing this I can get a good feel for the physical size of the object I'm working with. I won't show you the full design process which took days, but here's a taste of how it's done. Here I'm going to design the basic seat core. I begin with a simple cube. This is then scaled to approximately the correct width in the front view. In the side view it is then rotated to the correct angle, matching the seat back, before being repositioned and stretched. The cube is then divided up into sections, which can then be manipulated to recreate the correct seat profile. After spending six days designing the seat, I was nearly finished, but then my computer crashed, and I lost everything. Despite all my efforts, I could not recover the file. My work was gone for good. This was a little upsetting, but it taught me a valuable lesson. Make backups. I'd always made backups on previous builds, but just forgot this time around. I had been sending screenshots to some fellow modellers of my CAD work, and these images were all I had to show for days of work. But these images weren't useless. They were a record of the problem-solving process, and would help give me a fresh start to begin again. This side view, once straightened in Photoshop, would save me a lot of time researching the basic shapes and details. Throughout the design process I'd been making very rough sketch notes from the movie screen grabs. These rough drawings were invaluable, and would save me even more time. Researching and working out what components on screen actually look like probably had taken me a third of my time, so anything that helped was very welcomed. About four days later, I'd finished the CAD model for the seat, which now had multiple backups. The original movie seat was based on an aircraft ejector seat, and is crammed with detail. 
Most of what you see is additional parts to make it look more sci-fi. I love the styling, I think it looks really cool. One unique feature for the two main cockpit seats is the arm that the seats are mounted on. This only features in the first Guardians movie, and I'll have it on my model. In 148 scale, this total seat unit is only about 75mm or 3 inches long. I've added every piece of detail I can find, keeping everything as close to the original size as possible to maintain accuracy. Seat belts, footrests, throttle controls and rear seat details are all faithfully reproduced. Areas like the back of the seats and the arms for the display screen were difficult to research, but I'm really pleased with the result. From this CAD model, I can add lighting and a background. This allows me to create rendered images, which I can compare with the screen grabs to see how accurate my model is. I have added some detail to the underside of the seat, where none existed before. I doubt it'll be visible once the model is completed, but you never know. These renders really help me judge and compare the proportions against the original. I'm pretty confident it's spot on, but let's take it a stage further. These colour renders help us get closer to the original and give us a better idea of how the final model will look. Because of the metallic finish, it takes my computer about two hours to render each image. They certainly look pretty cool. Now I just have to create the physical model. I've added blocks under the seat base and arm base to ensure that when they are assembled, they sit at the correct height and angle. None of these parts are large, but they all have areas that need careful consideration when it comes to 3D printing. It would just be too ambitious to try and print the seat in fewer parts. Parts like the display screen and footrests will be difficult, so printing them separately will mean I can print multiples without compromising the rest of the seat. The display screen is my main concern, as the framing is so delicate. I use an Anycubic M3 Max resin printer and this allows me to have multiples of each item printed at the same time. This means I get spares, I can try different orientations or areas on the print bed, and can ultimately choose the best print. With resin printing, it takes just as long to print five of something as it does to print one, providing you can fit them on the build plate. So printing for spares was the way to go with this test. I've set the layer height to 10 microns and the anti-aliasing to 2. This should give me the best detail and minimise visible layer lines. With this layer height, this will take about 19 hours to print. And the following day, this is what I got. I'm amazed. Everything printed really well. All the details come out perfectly. There are a couple of issues that are down to not enough supports or print orientation, but I'll make a note of those for next time. This is only a test, as I needed to see what could be reproduced given the level of detail of the model, the scale and the printer resolution. This is not a high resolution printer, its key feature is its build volume, which is crucial for this build. All the parts come out really well, I was amazed by the footrests and display screen. These are accurate to the movie, without having to beef any of the parts up, so they print. Ok, they are very delicate but I have spares. And here's the parts cleaned up. The sides of the seat are very thin, but all the details there, even the throttles and joystick came out well. I do have a few layer lines and should have added some more supports, but as I said before, this is only a test. The footrest and screen are amazing. I removed the supports before curing under UV, as I was less likely to break the delicate parts. I'm delighted with how these parts printed. The parts can now be assembled for the first time with superglue. The seat looks great, just like the rendered images we looked at earlier. This test shows me areas I want to revisit and adjust to print better. I'd never have reached this level of detail in 172 scale. 148 was definitely the right choice. But the bare print doesn't give me the full picture. I need to get it into paint. I decided to try lacquer paints for the first time, as they have good opacity in thin layers, so I won't lose any detail with thick coats of acrylic. I gave the seat unit a coat of SMS Black as a base coat. I then followed up with a coat of SMS Silver. These were both sprayed direct from the bottle, unthinned using my Harder and Steenbeck and a 0.4 nozzle at about 15 psi. 
The results were great, and I then blocked in the rest of the colours in acrylic by hand using fine paintbrushes. You can see some of the layer lines here, but as I mentioned before, this is only a test, and it highlights what I have to address for the final model. The lacquer paints were certainly the right choice, and using good quality acrylics gives a great finish on the brushed parts. The final stage is to add oil washes, bringing out the detail. This worked really well. I used a combination of French ultramarine and burnt umber in various mixes. I wanted to try and vary the metallic finishes using other metallics, but this wasn't very successful. Maybe I'm expecting too much given the size of this seat unit, but I know what I want to achieve and I'm not there yet. Ultimately, I had something I could be proud of given the early setback and I'd learned a lot along the way. I know I can do better and I know what I can and what I want to improve on. I'm actually really pleased with how the seat came out and the quality of the print. Let me know in the comments what you think and what you think I should do differently. I've made a good start and if I can keep up this level of quality and detail, this will be a fantastic model. Fortunately, the seat base model is very good. It's just the printing, painting and finishing I need to work on. In the next episode, we're going to try and get the rest of the cockpit designed and 3D printed. Of course, the Milano needs a crew, and I have some exciting plans for them too. For now, I'll give myself a B+. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Project Milano. If you have, please share with your friends, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. It really helps me a lot. So you catch my next video when it goes live, click on the bell icon. To learn about some of the techniques I use, check out my how-to series to find out more about moulding, casting, CAD design and 3D printing. If you have any questions about Project Milano, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.